What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, SQL injection attack, listing the database contents on Oracle. Now the actual flow to this lab is very similar to the lab SQL injection attack, listing the database contents on non-Oracle databases. The only difference is really the name of the table that contains the database schema. It's a set of tables that contains information about the tables in the database. So in non-Oracle databases, information underscore schema dot could be dot tables, could be dot columns. These are examples of tables that contain the database schema. In Oracle, they're called something a little bit different. We can see all tables is an example of a name of the database schema table. There's also another table, all tab columns. Naturally, all underscore tables stores information about the tables contained in the database, whereas all underscore tab underscore columns contains information about the columns stored in the individual tables, but one of the columns in that table is actually table name. So each of the columns is linked to a specific table. So it might be a good idea to check out that previous lab first. So we're not going to focus too much on the details, we're going to jump straight into the lab. We want to log in as the administrator user. That's the objective of this lab. Now we can see a shop page with listed products and we can filter the products by category. For example, if I click on gifts, we only see products that fall within that category. And if we take a look at the URL, we can see there is an addition to the query string category equals gifts. So in the previous lab, we pointed out there's probably some type of SQL query running on the back end, similar to this select title description from products where category equals gifts. We're returning two values from this SQL query title and description. It's possible to union select also known as a union attack. And then we can provide two arbitrary values here, value one, value two from table. We get that returned on top of the original part of the query. Here we can see a copy of the HTTP request that's sent to filter the products. We can see the query string category equals gifts. We're in burp repeater, which means we can modify the query string and then resend the request. Now in the previous lab, we actually typed out the URL encoding manually. Another way you could do this is go to request query parameters. We can expand this section and we can actually fill out the decoded from box here and it will automatically apply URL encoding. So we have gifts. Now if I put a space in there, notice it appears as percent 20. Also spaces are sometimes URL encoded as a plus, especially when they're part of the query string, but ultimately the function is the same. We can see percent 20, the space URL encoding in the value box. In other words, we can just write plain text. We don't need to worry about URL encoding this manually. So union select. Now as a proof of concept, we like to try and select arbitrary strings. So let's select ABC and DEF from. Now Oracle is one of those SQL databases that requires us to choose from a table. Now it might seem a bit strange because we're just selecting strings. We don't actually care about the information contained in a table, but the way the SQL works for Oracle databases is we have to specify from. Having said that, there is a special table in Oracle that allows us to bypass this just to make sure the syntax is correct. And that table name is dual. So if we click apply changes, we can see everything is URL encoded for us. Let's send that to the back end. Let's analyze the response. And if we scroll down right beneath all of the products, we can see we have the strings ABC and DEF reflected to the page. We can also remove the gifts category. That way we'll only get the second half of the union select query return to the page. If we resend that, now we don't get any of the products. We simply get ABC DEF. So this just proves that this particular SQL query is vulnerable to union injection attack. Next stage is to retrieve information. We want the administrator username and password. But the problem in this case is we don't know what the users table is called. It's not just called user in this lab. That's part of the lab. And we also don't know what the username and password columns are in the users table. So we need to enumerate those first so that we can craft the SQL injection attack query. So how do we do that? Well, here in the port swigger docs, it mentions that we can use select all from all tables. So this is the table name we're interested that contains the table schema. However, we can't exactly use select all because this is the second half of a union select query. The first half of the union select return two values. We have to replace this with two values. So the next important piece of information here is that there is a column in all tables with the name table underscore name. So instead of union select ABC, 
We don't want to select a string. We now want to select table underscore name. We can also select null. We're required to select a second value, even if it's null, just so the syntax is valid. Then instead of from dual, we can make use of the Oracle standard table name, all tables. Let's click apply changes. Let's send that request to the back end. Let's analyze the output. We can now see a list of all of the table names. Now there's quite a few of them. We're interested in searching for a users table. So let's make use of the burp suite search option at the bottom of the response. Let's just type user. We can see we get three matches. Let's just loop through each of them. App users and roles. I don't think that's it. SDO preferred ops user. No, users underscore WWD TUY. Now often this particular table is just called users, but to make the lab interesting, this is going to change dynamically for each individual lab. So we need to run this query to find out what the users table is called. So now we know what the users table is called. We want to extract username and passwords, but we don't necessarily know what the column names are that contain the usernames and passwords. So we need to figure that out with another SQL query. So as part of Oracle, we also have this all underscore tab underscore columns that contains all of the columns contained in the database. Once again, we can't use the asterisk for select because we need to return exactly two values since it's the second half of a union select query, but we can also make use of column underscore name for this. So we know that we're going to be selecting from all underscore tab underscore columns. And instead of table underscore name, we want column underscore name, but we only want to return specific columns, the one associated with this user table. So we'll say where table underscore name. So table underscore name is now one of the columns in the all tab columns table where table underscore name equals. And now we know the name of the users table. We need to pass this as a string because it's an entry in the database users underscore WWD TUY. And we have our comment character at the end of the query. Let's click apply changes. Let's send that to the back end. Let's see what response we get. So now we get the names of the columns in the users table. So all we have is email, password, and username. We're not too interested in email, but we're definitely interested in the username and password columns. Once again, we can see that they've been renamed to include an additional arbitrary string. So unless we run this preliminary SQL query, we're not going to know what the columns are called. Therefore, we won't be able to extract the information from the columns. So now we know what everything's called. We can craft a targeted SQL attack to retrieve the data from those columns. So we're going to be selecting the username field. So union select username underscore A-C-C-E-G-I. And also we want to select the password column, password underscore T-N-F-K-G-F from, and we know the name of the users table. It's users underscore WWD T-U-Y. And since that's an actual table now, we don't want to reference that as a string. Comment character at the end, apply changes, send to the back end. Now we get the username followed by the password. As we mentioned in previous labs, ideally this password would be a hash. So even if we get to this stage, there's not really much we can do to compromise user accounts. We'd have to attack the hash first of all. But in this case, these are passwords stored as a plain string in the database. Hint, if you're a developer, don't ever do that. Even if someone has access to a database of username and passwords, they shouldn't be able to do anything with it because the passwords should be encrypted. Well, our objective to solve the lab is simply to log in as administrator. So let's copy this password. Back at the lab, let's click on my account, username, administrator, password should be on the clipboard. Click login. Your username is administrator, so we've successfully accessed the admin account. And we get the flag. Congratulations, you solved the lab. So the process compared to the previous lab is exactly the same. The key idea here is that there are different flavors of SQL database. And although the syntax is extremely similar, there are some differences in implementation, i.e. the information schema table names, as we've seen, and also the syntax itself varies somewhat. Portswigger has a cheat sheet that helps differentiate between the different flavors of SQL. So how to perform different activities broken down by Oracle, Microsoft SQL, PostgreSQL, and MySQL. Some sweeping similarities and most of the basic queries you run in one database are going to be exactly the same as how you'd run them on a second database. But for very specific types of hacking and penetration testing techniques, it's very important to know the difference. Difficult to memorize the difference. That's exactly why we have something like a cheat sheet. So once you figure out what version of the database is running on the back end, we can visit the cheat sheet and have a look at some version specific SQL queries. All right. Hope it was helpful. Thanks for checking out the content. Catch you guys in the next lab.